All right, welcome back. Last time we talked a little bit about chemical formulas and we introduced how we could, using the chemical formula, identify the different uh, kinds of elements in an atom. And we also talked about um, how we could identify the numbers of the elements in a different compound. Um, so <clears throat> here's an example. Iron phosphate, written here, FEPO4, okay? And we have to use the periodic table, so we'll bring the periodic table in. Let's see if you can identify how many, uh, what the different atoms are, first of all, and how many of those different atoms are in FEPO4. So it's good to kind of write down a list of the different atoms. What different atoms are there in this compound? Fe. Fe. P. Very good. Do you know what Fe is? What element Fe is? Can we find it on the periodic table there? 20, 26 there? What's the name of it? Iron. Very good. And what about P and O? What are their names? Uh, Phosphorus. 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 Good. Very good. Excellent. So we know that we have iron, phosphorus, and oxygen in this compound. Now let's try to find out how many. How many irons? Very good. How about how many phosphoruses? One. One. Very good. And oxygens? One. Very good. You're really good. All right. So we have a slide here of exercises now. Oh, we also talked briefly a little bit of a review again about hydrates. It's when certain ionic compounds come with molecules of water, multiple molecules of water sometimes. All right. So this is named copper sulfate, penta, five, the, the prefix for five is penta, hydrate. And we'll talk more about naming the compounds later, but you can uh, heat them and then they'll get rid of the water molecules. Do you remember why somebody might be interested in uh, buying a compound that is a hydrate like this as opposed to buying it anhydrous without water. Do you remember why? That's exactly right. And then when you weigh it out and it has the water, the mass you weigh out you think is the, the chemical, but it really is some of it's water and so you're not getting as much as you think you're getting. Very good. Here we are. This is our opportunity. We're going to look at this first compound, Na2CO3. This is called sodium carbonate, and you don't have to worry about how to name it for now. But how many sodiums, how many carbons, and how many oxygens? What do you think? Uh, two. two sodiums, good. And then what? One. One carbon, and then? Three oxygens. Very good. All right. So very good. Two, one, and three oxygens. Okay. This one's a little bit more tricky here because we have the parentheses and to the right of the parentheses it says that we have two of those groups. So look at that compound there which is called ammonium sulfate and tell me how many nitrogens there are. Good. Two nitrogens. How about uh, hydrogens? Eight, good. Sulfurs? One. One, very good. And oxygens? Four. Four, fabulous. Okay, the next one. This is magnesium phosphate. Magnesium phosphate. What do you think? How many magnesiums? Good. How about phosphoruses? Two. 
two. Very good. Oxygens. Fabulous. Way to go. Ooh, here's a tricky one now. Copper sulfate pentahydrate. How many coppers? Good. How about sulfurs? Good. Oxygens? Four. But there's some over here as well, right? Nine. Good. And how about hydrogens? Very good. One, one, nine, and five. Fabulous. You're doing very good. And that is very critical to be able to look at a compound and know how many atoms are in a given statement. And remember, we have things like coefficients, where if I took a compound, like maybe I had a, a magnesium phosphate dihydrate, and then I put a 2 in front, that coefficient means that I have two of everything there. So I'd have to find out how many of the different atoms I would have in one and then multiply it by two. Okay, very good. Now I'm going to talk about um, different ways that we can classify matter. Different ways that we can classify matter. Um, and we kind of already talked about this a little bit. We said before that we could kind of Think about material as either compounds or elements. All right, so they're either compounds or elements, and that's just one way to kind of think about materials, right? Um, all matter is you know, everything, so you could say that. All, both of these compounds and elements are in a larger circle of, of, of matter. Right? Another way to think about it is that matter can be divided up into uh, either materials that are pure, pure substances, or materials that are mixtures, mixtures. Now, in science, a mixture is when you combine more than one substance, more than one compound. Now, a pure substance, on the other hand, it, it doesn't have to have just the same kind of element. So you can see that underneath pure substances, we have compounds and elements. So my ring, again, let's pretend like my ring is, is just made of, of gold, only gold. If it was only made of gold, it would be elemental, and therefore you could call it a pure substance. All right. Water is a compound that all of the molecules of water look exactly the same. It's an oxygen with two hydrogens attached to it. All of it. So if I had a container of a beaker of water, all the molecules of water would be exactly the same. And because they're all exactly the same molecules, we can call this a pure substance. So it doesn't have to be the same element to be a pure substance. Pure substances can be compounds or elements. All right. Um, a mixture is when you have multiple compounds. So for example, if I take my water and I add some sodium chloride, that's salt, right? Table salt. If you take salt and put it in the, the water, put some salt into the water, now I'm going to have a mixture of water and the sodium chloride, okay? And now this is no longer a pure substance. It's a mixture. It's a mixture. All right, so pure substances, for example, um, octane, which is a chemical that we have in gasoline. I don't know if you ever see when you fill up with gasoline, there's a little tag on the side that tells you uh, an octane rating because octane is one of the 
the substances that's in gasoline. Um, this here is, could be a, a pile of salt, for example. This here is just a little tiny piece of gold called a, a nanoparticle of gold, really small. Nano means really small. So a nanoparticle of gold. And in terms of uh, compounds, the salt, sodium chloride, has different elements in it, so therefore it's a compound. This compound here looks like it has carbons and hydrogens, more than one kind of element. But because this is all the same element, it's a pure substance, but it's in the, the elements side. All right. So let's think about some, some mixtures. Mixtures, for example, uh, milk. What do you think the main component in milk is? Any ideas? What do you think? Dairy. Well, it's, a, it's in the dairy category. That's right. But what is it you're putting in your mouth when you drink it? What are you tasting? It look That's right. It's water. Water is the main component in milk. Now, there's other stuff in there, and that's what you know gives it the, the color. That's why it's white. There's uh, uh, calcium, there's proteins, there's fats. Okay, You have lots of different uh, materials in there. And so that's why we call it uh, a mixture, a mixture. Um, salad dressing. I'm sure you've seen salad dressing that kind of looks like this, where it separates, right? Uh, salad dressing contains uh, maybe oil, oils on top. I don't know if you remember when when oil spills happen in the ocean, oil floats on top of the water. Oil always floats on top of water. Um, and then water down at the bottom, and usually the water has some vinegar in it, okay, which is called acetic acid. So there's a, a mixture. This little thing here, these little red dots represent oxygen atoms and see how they're, it's O2. The oxygen atoms are in little packets of O2. And the blue ones represent nitrogen gas, N2. And this is what we have in the air, the air. The air is a mixture. It's a mixture of oxygen gas and nitrogen gas. Um, do you know what there is more of in the air? Is there more oxygen or is there more nitrogen? What do you think? Oxygen. oxygen. Actually, there's only 20% oxygen and about 80% nitrogen. So the air is mostly nitrogen gas. We don't need the nitrogen gas when we breathe. When we're breathing, we're trying to collect the oxygen gas out of the air. But if this was a balloon that I blew up with my breath, it would have about 20% oxygen, 80% nitrogen, and then small amounts of uh, carbon dioxide, okay, and a couple other gases possibly. All right, so this mixture here is called air. That's what's in air. And then here's just a mixture of uh, a bunch of frosty. And you can see by that frosting mixture, looking at it closely, you can see that there's some red, some green, and some white. And it's not, and blue, and it's not completely mixed. It's not homogeneous, we call it, homogeneous. Uh, if you look at one point, it looks like it's all white. If you look over here, it looks like it's all blue. If this was homogeneous, then everything would look the same, because homo means same. So every little portion would be the same throughout. Something like milk, you could think of it as homogeneous, because uh, if you look at the top, or the bottom, or the side, or any portion of it, it looks, and the chemicals are evenly dispersed, evenly spread out. Now that's not the way it is when it comes out of the cow. If I take a cow and start milking, so here's my cow, right? Here's my cow and I'm going to milk the cow 
If I take the cow and I start milking, all right, take the cow and I start milking, I get a bucket full of, what you get is you get a lot of water here. Now there's a little bit of white milk in it, but mostly water. And the cream, the fat and the protein is all up on top, mostly up on top. So to get it to be like what we're interested in when we go to the, the store, right? So I have my cow, um, I, I milk the cow, but now when I want to sell the milk, people don't want the milk separated like that. They want it mixed. And so what you say is you homogenize the milk. And you can look on the side of the milk, it always says homogenized milk, homogenized. And homogenized, homogeneous, right? That's this big fancy word here, homogeneous, means that all of the, the chemicals in the milk have been evenly separated out. Or if you think of a, a, a salad dressing, you'll want to shake it before you put it on. If you put the salad dressing on before you shake it, you'll just get the one part, the one component, right? You won't get the other as well. So mixtures are separated into either homogeneous mixtures or heterogeneous mixtures. Homo means same. So what's the same? Well, if I draw a, a, a cup of, of milk straight out of the cow, right? It would be just a little bit of white stuff here and most of the cream on top. This would be my heterogeneous mixture. This is straight out of the cow. But this one has been mixed well, right? And so it's all the same color throughout because all the top has been mixed in with the bottom. This would be called a homogeneous mixture. Now, what did we say homo means? Did you? Same. That's right. I think, let's see. Is your microphone on? Can I hear you? Yeah. Okay, good. It's the same. That's right. And hetero means what? That's right. Different. That means there's different amounts of the different materials in different locations. If it's homogeneous, that means if you go to different spots, the concentration or the amount of the different materials will be the same. Okay. So in that way, milk can become homogeneous if you mix it well. Salad dressing, it's heterogeneous without mixing. And uh, this frosting mixture here, that's heterogeneous. You can see that it's not mixed thoroughly. What about air? Do you think if I go to the top of my room that there's a different amount of nitrogen and oxygen than there is at the bottom of the room? Yes. Well, actually, it's, if it, there is a difference, it's very, very slight. And so we say air is a pretty homogeneous mixture. Now, what did we say were the two components in air, the two major components in air? I'm going to write those down again here. Very good. Oxygen gas and nitrogen gas. Very good. And what was the highest concentration? What was the, the component in the high? Yeah, nitrogen. 80% nitrogen. Very good. Now, um, what do you think about a soda pop, Coca-Cola? Would that be a pure substance or a mixture? Mixture. Why did you think that it's a mixture? Yeah. What do you think is the major component? Water. Water. Very good. But what else do you think is in soda pops? Carbonation. Good. That's carbon dioxide. Anything else? What about sugar? sugar? Yeah, lots of sugar. And there's something that's giving us that color. So, 
Very good. What about syrup? Would that be a, a pure substance or a mixture? Very good. Mixture. It has mostly water again, but a lot of sugar and some coloring and other flavors as well. Okay. Now, um, sometimes you'll see the atoms drawn as little spheres like this. Okay. Um, you don't need to memorize these or really think much about this, but it's the first introduction to how the different a handful of the different elements have different colors and also sizes so that we can kind of visualize different atoms sometimes. And that's what we saw here with this compound that we drew, right? Uh, the carbons and the hydrogens were displayed. See how carbon is black and hydrogen is white? So that's just an introduction. We don't have to remember too much about that. But let's see how we can do on this, this chart here. All right. We're going to try to classify all these materials. Now, we might not know some of these materials. We might not, might, not, might not know whether it's a pure substance, an element, compound, molecule, so forth. But we'll do our best. We'll do our best, and we'll work together. Ah, hot cocoa. Hot cocoa. Have you ever made hot cocoa? All right, what are some of the main components? What do you think? Is it a pure substance? Is it an element? Is it a compound? Is it a molecule? What do you think? Very good. It's a mixture. It's a mixture. And now, your answers might be better than the answers that the slide has. So, do you think it's a heterogeneous mixture or a homogeneous mixture? Heterogeneous? Do you ever put marshmallows in your hot cocoa? Yeah. Yeah, and then for sure it's heterogeneous, right? Because the marshmallows are floating around, and sometimes at the bottom the chocolate collects. So it's either heterogeneous or homogeneous, depending on how well it's mixed. Very good. How about ice? Uh, pure Very good. Pure substance. Is it an element? Well, it's actually not an element because it's a mixture, it's a combination of elements, right? We have hydrogen and oxygen coming together. If it was just hydrogen or just oxygen, right, because those are elements on the periodic table, then it could be an element. But we have it as a pure substance here. What about a compound? Do you think it's a compound? Yeah, yeah it is a compound, right? Compound. And yes, it is a molecular compound. Hydrogens and oxygens are both nonmetals, so it's a molecule. Very good. Oh, whoops, that got shifted down. Hold on just one second. All right, so yes, ice is a pure substance, a compound, and it is a molecule too, because all the hydrogen and oxygen are both uh, nonmetals. What about white flour? What do you think, Tom? Let's talk about it. Would it be a pure substance? How do you make white flour? You know? Yeah, you take wheat and you grind it up. Now, we don't... What's that? Well, let's talk about that a little bit. Um, we don't feel bad sometimes about eating flour, and not that we should, but did you know that wheat is a seed? It's a seed, and if you put a seed in the ground, it'll grow. It'll grow into a whole wheat plant, or whatever the seed is, pumpkin, watermelon, whatever, it'll grow. Um, so inside that seed, there's more than just one kind of compound, isn't there? There must be DNA, there must be proteins, there must be, basically all the stuff that's in a person is going to be in a seed because it's going to be a living organism. So it's not just one thing. So it must not be a pure substance, huh? So is it going to be an element? 
Is it going to be a compound? Yes. Well, it's not going to be just one compound, though, is it? So what does it have to be? It has to be a, a, a mixture of some sort, right? Yeah. Right. And if the white flower is really well distributed and really small, then you could say it's a homogeneous mixture, right? Um, if it was like, if you've ever ground your own wheat and you get that mixture, some parts are big, some parts are small, and uh, the, 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 chaff, the chaff on top kind of floats around, so then it might be a heterogeneous mixture. Sometimes it's hard to tell whether it's a homogeneous or heterogeneous mixture. All right, sodium chloride. Sodium chloride. What do you think? Compound. Very good. Compound. Now, can it be a pure, it must be a pure substance then, right? Because remember that um, pure substances can either be described as compounds or elements. So if it's compound, it's got to be a pure substance. Very good. Um, is it a molecule? Here, let's take a look at the periodic table to decide. Where's sodium at? What number is sodium? Number 11? Oh, no, it's not molecular. It's not molecular. It's not a molecule. So it's a compound, um, and it's a pure substance, but it's not an element, and it's not a molecule. Okay. Brass. Brass. Do you know what brass is? Brass knuckles, very good. Instruments made of brass. I don't know, really know what it's made of, though. Is it an element? Can we find it on here? Here's BR. Is that brass? Whoops. No, that's bromine. I don't see brass on here anywhere. So that means it's not an element. So it must be a combination of other things. So that makes it a compound. Now, it, it could be a pure substance, though, still. Whoops, we don't have it on here. It could be a pure substance, and it is a pure substance if it's mixed well, but it's a combination. So if it's not on the periodic table, it's never going to be an element. So that one is a pure substance and um, a compound. Okay, very good. So, um, I'm going to introduce to you a couple of laws of chemistry. Laws of chemistry. Um, the first law, which I'm going to introduce to you, is the law of conservation of mass. Conservation of mass. And that means that when chemistry occurs, None of the material, none of the mass is increased or decreased. Or another way to say it is you never lose or gain mass in your experiment. So, for example, here I have a cup of water, right? If I broke that water up into hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. And if I started with one gram of water, in the end, how much mass of the oxygen and hydrogen would I have? It'd have to be the same, right? One gram. Even though I broke it up into smaller parts, the mass of the products has to be the same as the mass of the Reactants. Wait, what? Well, it comes out as oxygen gas. That's a good observation. It's not quite balanced here, right? I'd have to put a two here and a two there to balance it. But hydrogen gas and oxygen gas would be the product, and the amount that I'd get would have to equal the same amount as I started with. 
So any chemical reaction, here's a chemical reaction that I'm going to make up right now. A plus B plus C, and they react together to form D and E. If I take 2.5 grams of A, B, and C and combine it together, how many grams of D and E am I going to have? What do you think, Tom? If I start off with 2.5 grams of A, B, and C, how many grams of D and E am I going to have? 2.5 grams? Yeah, 2.5. And that's the law of what? What's it called? The law of... What's it say there? Conservation. conservation. Law of conservation of mass. Very good. Very good. Okay, um, here's another example. Have a chemical in this test tube and another chemical outside the test tube, and I have their mass. I mix them together and the reaction occurs, but the mass stays the same. Very good. Okay, I think that that's a good place to stop. Thank you very much. We'll talk more about the law of conservation of mass next.